Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to just kind of wrap up the week with a nice little viewer request video that came in uh, this week, which was, hey, how do I get started using Python for data engineering? Um, you know, and while this might seem like a simple question to a lot of you and you know, something super basic, this video is not for you. This is for people that are saying, hey, you know, I'm just starting to try, start my journey into using Python for data engineering or just data engineering in general. And so I wanna give you just kind of a basic toolkit to allow you to get started. I'll show you how to run some simple scripts, how to automate and schedule them, um, and just some of the tools that Python offers for data engineering. Um, and without further ado, let's get started, let's get into it. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do to really get started with Python is pick a development environment. In this example, I'm using VS Code, which is just a Microsoft open source, well not open source, but it's free. And then you can choose to either start writing your Python files, either as just a .py file. So here, what I would do is create a new Python file, uh, type in Python code, this is obviously not real, but then save as, and save your Python code as a Python code .py format. Um, so this example down here, we can see, actually see it under one of these options here. So saving it in the Python format, and I just hit save. And you can see now that it's a .py, this little Python uh, icon will pop up next to it. And so in this method, you know, if I wanted to run the whole script, I would just go into my command line and, and hit run uh, and select the script. But what I'm also going to do is show you, and what I'm going to use to develop today is a uh, integrated or a notebook environment. So you can see here, this is called a Jupyter Notebook. And this just allows you to write different Python code blocks as cells and then immediately run them uh, within the Python environment of your choice, which is called a kernel here. So here, Python, what do I have? I don't actually have any kernels installed yet. Um, so yeah, here, just choosing to run these in Python and then you can choose to customize your Python environment. Um, I'm also just gonna install this recommended Python extension uh, to make sure I have everything I need to just start developing with Python. I mean, that's really the great part about VS Code, in my opinion, it just has a lot of tools to write your workflows Pythonically. And so what you'll also wanna do on your machine uh, is install some packages. So you probably already have Python installed. Now you can run pip install Python. I don't even have pip installed, so one sec. So to install pip, what you'll need to do, and also pip, just to take a step back, is a Python package manager. So this is how you're gonna install any kind of package into Python, pretty much. Um, so you'll install it on your little computer using pip, um, but first you gotta install pip. So I'm gonna use brew, homebrew, uh, since I'm on a Mac, to install pipx. Um, and since I just already installed it for brevity here, uh, you can see it's installed and up to date. So that'll then allow me to use the pip command. And so then here, what I've done is then typed in pipx. So you can't, don't use pip, use pipx now. And this will install it globally. Um, and here it's installing all these different packages that I just included. Um, so this will bring in all the different packages and requirements necessary. Um, so now just because I also prefer developing um, in a Python script, I think this is, kind of gives you more flavor of a more advanced development style. I'm actually going to use this um, instead of a Jupyter Notebook. And I'm gonna show you how we can use all those packages that we just installed uh, while also explaining what they are. Um, so the first one is requests. And so this one is a package that will allow us to essentially just pull from any kind of API. So you can see in this example, we have a URL, which is just a JSON placeholder website uh, that will just generate basic JSON play, uh, placeholders. And then we're gonna get this response using this request.get method. So this .get method is a function that you can use where you can just pass an URL and this function will take care of the logic to actually extract the information from that URL. Then we're gonna save it using this response.json method, which will turn that response into a more easily readable JSON. Then we're going to use the uh, pandas json normalize function. So pandas is a function that allows you to create data frames, which you can th essentially think of as a flat database. It's a uh, Google Sheets almost, if you will, of data. Um, so it's a little more advanced than just a standard array, which is just a bunch of different numerical values appended to each other. With pandas, you have the concept of you know vertical and horizontal rows and the way you traditionally think of a, a data set. Um, then what we'll do finally is just print the head of this data set. Um, just to give us an example to see, hey, I wanna see the first couple posts in this uh, placeholder JSON file. And then to run this, all we need to do is go here and type in, sorry, not import, that's the actual code, but type in Python 3.12. So this is the Python environment I've installed on my local machine. If you haven't installed Python, 
go to the Python website, install it there. It's super easy. Um, really just like installing anything else. That's why I didn't bother showing you. <coughs> and you're typically, if you're installing the Python website, you're going to be installing Python 3.2 uh, or 3.12, which is the latest version of Python. Uh, so then once we've chosen our Python 3.12, we're then going to type in the name of our Python file, which is first python.py. And you can see here we have some user IDs, uh, some number of posts, and then we have just some example boilerplate text generated by this JSON placeholder website. And this is honestly the basic uh, basics of how a lot of data is collected. You're just executing a request, bringing that data in some standard format, and then normally you would save this in another location um, instead of just printing it out onto your terminal command line. Now, another t cool thing you can do here is also use a URL in Pandas to actually just read a CSV that's publicly hosted on the internet. So here in this example, what I have is a, CS or just a CSV that's hosted at this fsu.edu. And then what I'm going to do is just basically read that CSV using this pandas read CSV function, which accepts a URL. And then this will query that URL and go like that file that's stored there. And then we're going to run print df.head to print the first couple lines of this uh, CSV. So let's see how it goes. So here we're just going to do the same thing, same file name. And here we have month, uh, month index, uh, the year, and uh, the amount of air travel in that year, I would imagine. Um, so just another way to make that Python makes it really easy to query data uh, and then interpret it, read it, really do whatever you want. Um, so now that we know how to collect data, the next thing I want to show you is some basics on how you can use Python to transform your data. So instead of making a new script, let's actually just extend this existing script to take this CSV and then let's rename some of the columns. Um, so here, what we'll do is say, hey, Data frame, use that pandas data frame we created. Rename the columns month, uh, which is in quotes, to just regular months. We don't have these quotes. Uh, then we have 1958, 1958. So again, just removing these quotes. Um, so it just is a nice cleaner interface. Um, and then do it in place. So don't create new columns, just replace these existing values. Um, and then another thing we want to do is fill NA. Um, so pandas actually is a really useful function for handling missing values where you can replace them with a given value, in this case zero. Um, there's also more advanced logic you can do to just have this be conditional. But at the basics, it makes it really easy just to handle those blank empty spaces, especially if you have inconsistent data, um, you know, really important to clean it up. Then we're also going to convert the date types. So we're going to convert uh, date or month into just a string. Um, and then save that within our the same column. So we're replacing the existing month date time with just a simple string. Um, because Jan, Feb, this is all being stored in date time format and we just want a simpler uh, string format. Then we'll just finish it all up with another print df head and see how we're doing. So run this again. And boom, now you can see one to one the changes that have occurred. Um, so you can see month was actually already without quotes, um, but the rest of these have been changed to not have quotes and even though these, uh, Jan, Feb, March, haven't seen any real change um, visually in terms of their data type and how they're handled by the computer. They, ac they actually have been changed where now they're handled as simple strings instead of uh, date time format. Then let's add some functions to the data. So, you know, another good thing that Python allows you to do is have logic to say, hey, based on a certain type of data, make this change to that um, in the logic that I want. And so what you can do to do this is add a function. So here, if you wanted to find a function of Python, you just type in this def keyword, and then add exclamation is the name of my function, and then title is a string that I'm going to pass into this function when I call it. So, what, and you'll see what this looks like in a second, but here, title is going to be, whatever value has been fed in as title into this function is going to be returned with an exclamation point uh, added at the end of it as its new function. And then, which another great tool that Pandas has, is the apply method. So here we can actually apply this method to every piece within this title data frame, uh, or to every entry within this title column um, to add the exclamation to every piece, uh, to every title, um, to then just edit each of those data points using a function. You can see how you, know, you can add your own even more advanced logic here, but in this basic example, just you know, adding exclamation point. And I just wanted to use title as kind of a placeholder here, but we're really going to replace this with month. Um, just wanted to make it a little cleaner when explaining it. Um, so here, 
we have month, month, uh, just adding an exclamation point, and then we can run first Python, and boom, now you have an exclamation point now next to each of these month names, just making it all a little more exciting. So now the last thing I wanna show you is just saving this. Um, so typically when, you know, when you're saving your data, you're gonna either want to save it in a CSV, an object storage, or within a backend database. If you're just saving it as a CSV, and in this case, since I'm working on my local machine, I can just save it as a CSV on my local file system. Um, and so here, what I'll do is just add this line, df.2csv, um, which again is included in, that pi in the pandas package, and then type, just I could run this script again, and this will save this transform data CSV within the same repository as my Python script. So you can see here, just created this transform data CSV. So super useful, just for saving on your local machine. And then a slightly more complex example, um, I'm just going to use SQL Alchemy, which is essentially just a way to uh, run a small lightweight SQL database on your own machine. So from SQL Alchemy, import create engine, and this create engine is referring to creating a engine for this database. Um, and then here, what you would do is type in engine, create engine, or just establish a connection to your database, and then type in database or DF2 SQL, and then what this will do is convert your data frame into a SQL compatible database and then uh, save it within that given database. So here again, and this will likely fail because I don't actually have a database, but here what you're seeing is just, yeah, this database getting, or this getting saved to the SQLite engine um, that has just been complete, uh, created within the uh, same script. So really, really simple um, ways to, you know, just kind of manipulate, transform your data. And then actually one more thing um, is adding logging. So you might actually, I'll save that for our next video because logging is not that interesting for basics. But I hope this has given you, you know, kind of enough to just get started with Python. Um, if there's anything else under the basics that you're interested in seeing, this video didn't cover it, let me know and I'll include it in a future video. Um, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.